Seven is the amount of books that I read in the month of July and I don't know if you know this but it's been a really long time since I've read that many books in a month and I'm just very happy about that. Hello guys, how are you? I hope you're good. Um, today I will be telling you about all the books that I read in July, my July reading wrap-up you could say. But let's just dive right in because I just want to get through this really fast. Uh, this might be out of order because honestly I don't remember the order in which I read these, but Handy Dandy Goodreads has the list, so hopefully this is correct? I'm not sure. But first let's talk about A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Um, I have a book review on this already so if you're interested in hearing more in-depth thoughts or more of like a rant you could say, uh, you could go check that out. I'll link it down below. A Court of Thorns and Roses is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Our main character, Feyre, is taken into the fairy world because she accidentally killed a fairy that was uh, in the shape of a wolf in order to feed her family. But because of this, you know, she's punished and her punishment is living in the fairy world in this giant castle mansion with uh, these other fairy type characters and it's very um it's it's not good folks it's not good uh it's it's definitely a uh, entertaining read it's very i'm gonna flip these pages just to see how more ridiculous this book can get sort of thing but it's just the character our main character just she feels as if she um, she was written to be a strong character, but she's just so Bella Swan. She's just so Bella Swan and it's so aggravating. And then her love interest makes no sense. Why are they falling in love? Stop it. And then all of the like abuse that's sort of underlined within this book. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I still might read the second book though just for curiosity's sake. Um, but this is one that I just find bizarre and don't understand why so many people love it so much. Uh, but that's A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Let's move on to the next book. In the Heart of the Sea by Nathaniel Philbrick. This is a non-fiction book. This is about the tragedy of the whale ship Essex. Now this is actually what inspired Herman Melville to write Moby Dick. At least bits and pieces of this inspired Moby Dick as a whole. And so this story is so so tragic because it's true um this ship this crew were out you know whaling when their ship was actually attacked by this huge whale and it it caused so much damage that the ship sunk and now the the crew is trying to survive in all of these small little boats and you know over time they're so far from land and they end up going in in the wrong direction and things are just miscommunication and whatnot they end up starving and being malnourished. They turn to cannibalism and other means of survival. And it's just so, it's tragic. It's tragic, like the book would tell you. This stuff is never easy to read, but it's just so fascinating to, to see what these people actually went through. And just, just to read about what people were kind of thinking in that time and just their lives, what they were going through, their families themselves. And I just found it to be such a moving story and I really, really loved it. And Moby Dick is one of my favorite books. So I was really happy to finally read this, to read some sort of source material, you could say. So I really, really recommend this if you are interested in some back history on what inspired Moby Dick, if you want to read a really, really, really um, heartbreaking survival story because some of the crew did survive. Not all of them, most of them did perish, but yes. So that is In the Heart of the Sea. After that, I read Artemis Fowl by Ian Colfer. This one took me by such a surprise, such a such a wonderful surprise, because uh, when I first read this, I remembered not enjoying it that much, but the second go around, or third go around, how many times have I read this? I think I've read this quite a few times, but um, I really enjoyed it this time. Artemis Fowl follows the story of Artemis Fowl. He is the 
this uh, genius young kid. He's he's so smart, but he's also kind of a jerk. Like he's not a nice kid. Uh, he's this milli. He comes from a really wealthy family, and his goal is just to become more wealthy and to infiltrate the fairy world to get more money and just to conquer and just to do so many things. Right? He just wants power. Basically, this kid is power hungry, and so this first story follows him as he takes he kidnaps a fairy and keeps a hostage and tries to get money from the other fairies and they're kept in this big old house or his house and it, it's funny seeing all like the the magical treat creatures trying to infiltrate his home and um it was a great time it was a great time it's really fast paced it's a lot of fun there's actually a lot more comedy in this book than i thought there would be so i was chuckling quite a bit um yeah i really recommend this i have the second book which i plan on reading really soon because it was just so fun i just enjoy that a lot you know the next book i read is called the plover by brian doyle this one was probably the most whimsical, magical, bizarre, but um, I loved it so, so much. It's one of my favorites this year so far, just because of the whole atmosphere and the way this book made you felt. Anyway, so The Plover is the story of this man, and this man um, basically says, forget society, forget humans, forget people. I'm over it. I'm going to go in my sailboat or my ship and just sail away and live on my own. Forget everyone else. And that's the story. We follow him as he's just sailing along in the ocean and there's a bird that keeps him company and he, he ends up picking up an old friend and his daughter. And you know, this story is really simple, but I think what really makes it so charming is that we're learning a lot about the backstory of these characters, their history, what made them you know, what what caused them to be here at this point. And this book sort of, the way it's written, it's very whimsical and very, I don't want to say flowery, but it's just really like run on sentences that just, I don't know, that play with your mind and get you questioning so many different, you know, themes in life and whatnot. And it was just so beautiful and heartwarming and also funny. This book was really funny too. And I just really love it. This is kind of like, it's like taking all the love of the sea, but somehow connecting it to you know life in general and just people and whatnot I don't know how to describe it it's such a weird book but it is such a, a wonderful uh, time of a read and I really really recommend the plover so that was one that I really really liked after that I read Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This was one that I was very hesitant on picking up because of all the booktube hype this is all over booktube but at the same time, I love a good mystery, thriller, crime book, so I kind of still wanted to read it. Truly Devious is the story of this infamous boarding school in the early 19, I want to say, hundreds. Um, it was formed by this man named Albert Ellingham, I believe, and he formed it as a place where really smart kids could go to and then there there's this weird like game aspect to the school, but he also wanted kids that were more low income to have the ability to go to the school as well, so he brought you know, so many random different kids from different areas of the world to go to this boarding school. But what happened was a kidnapping, a murder um, in the beginnings of this school. So that is what this school is actually mainly known for, this murder that took place. Um, so there's that storyline of this book. And then we also follow now where our main character, Stevie, this young girl that's really into crime and she's really into that original case. She goes to this school in order to study that case and also just crime in general. And it's really interesting because we follow both storylines. We follow the past, we follow Stevie now as she's trying to figure out the past, but also figure out things that are going on now. And it's this jumble of just, I don't know, so much going on, so much mystery, so many questions. And the characters are really interesting too. We have a lot of unique characters. We've got writers, we've got this really um, a smart girl that's super into engineering. Um, we have even a YouTuber. Uh, this book is filled with so many interesting things. And and I just found it to be completely consuming. This is such a readable book. It has such a Nancy Drew vibe, but it's also very like, 
Um, I don't even know. It's just really good. So I would recommend this if you enjoy, you know, a fast paced mystery that's really fun. Um, it does have its faults. It's not perfectly written. Some of the characters do questionable things. You know, I have some questions kind of with sort of like the structure with some of the the potential romances and there's one character that I just don't like and I don't see the point of even after reading the second book I just don't like this character but in for the most part I do really enjoy this book and I just really really loved it and I love the second book which you'll hear me talk about next month but um yeah that's truly devious by Maureen Johnson and then I read Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear this also was a book that I had heard about forever ago on booktube because it was actually really popular at the time and this is this fantasy book that involves time travel we follow this family where there's this gene that kind of goes through the generations and some of the family will get it it's the ability to travel through time and so that's basically the story where it's a, it's a, a time travel book and our main character she accidentally stumbles into this whole world um she didn't realize that that was where her family came from that she would be able to be a part of this because it was supposed to be someone else but it's instead it's her and it's a lot of fun it's a bit ridiculous it's so campy it's very cliche um i wouldn't necessarily recommend it recommend it but if you enjoy time travel you could possibly enjoy it i'm not gonna lie it is pretty cheesy but for the most part, if you are just looking for some brain candy, Ruby Red is the perfect book for you uh, because the romance that you can just see coming within this book is just so why why i see it coming a mile a million miles away but it's just so predictable it's very predictable but um i did enjoy it enough to where i um took out the second book from the library so i will be reading that in august and hopefully it's fun you know i'm just looking for a fun time so that is ruby red <laughs> and the last book that i read in july is fathomless by jackson pierce now i had really low expectations for this book because i had previously read something from jackson pierce before sisters Red, which was a retelling of the Little Red Riding Hood, did not like it at all, so my expectations were pretty low. But suffice that to say, pleasantly surprised with this one because uh, Fathomless is a retelling of The Little Mermaid. Now Jackson Pierce is really known for her retellings, fairy tale retellings, just putting that out there for you. So if you're interested in retellings, you might want to check uh, her out. Uh, so Fathomless is really dark. You know, The Little Mermaid in itself is a dark story, but Fathomless, it sort of takes that and just twists it even more. It is strange. It is a strange book with the things that are involved in this one. But overall, this story follows our, our main character, Lo. She is a, you could call her a mermaid, a siren. She is among that sort of creature-esque, but there's not really a word for what she is in this book because she doesn't have a tail, you know, she doesn't have that typical mermaid look. She still has her legs, but the thing with her is that when she walks on land, her feet will bleed. So it physically hurts her to walk on land. She cannot go on land, um, so she has to stay in the water. And she's a part of this sisterhood with um, her group of other girls that are just like her. So she's stuck there. She really wants to return to her human in life that's her goal but she has to stay on the water so she's kind of just in this limbo of wanting to be a human again and when she's given that opportunity she finds out that the only way to do so is to basically kill another human to try to get them to fall in love with her she's constantly in this battle of this is good this is wrong that's the main gist of the story and we have another main character that we also follow that's trying to help her in the process while also dealing with her own powers that i don't really want to get into because it's a human and she it's an interesting side plot that's very weird to be involved with the little mermaid but i enjoyed it a lot so i would say that this book did really well in the whole atmosphere and it really did well with making you really care about these characters um i think jackson pierce did such a good job with these characters because if not i probably would have been annoyed like i was with sisters red but she did really well with this so i really recommend fathomless it's such a dark story but it's beautiful and it's tragic and it's sad all at the same time but i really enjoyed it so I highly recommend this if you like any sort of ocean books, retelling books, if you like mermaids, but you know, dark siren books, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, those are all the books that I read in July. Um, oh, no, 
No, I read more. I read half of The Stand by Stephen King. Um, I returned it to the library. I will be returning to it eventually, so I just want to throw this out there. I read half of The Stand. I read 800 pages, so it just... Um, it was starting to drag, so I needed to put it down, but I do want to return to it, okay? I'm going to return to the stand someday, eventually, in the future. Um, but yeah, that's all I read in July. Um, if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts or opinions, I would love to know those in the comments below. What did you read, um, this last month? Did you read good things? Did you read bad things? Let me know. Um, yeah. I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!